Hey everyone, and welcome to my tutorial on merge sort and how you can implement this sorting algorithm in Python. In this tutorial, I just want to explain the general principle of merge sort. Afterwards, I want to show you an example. And at the end, I just want to show you how you can implement this algorithm. First of all, merge sort is a divide and conquer algorithm. In general, this just means that a problem is divided into multiple subproblems. And those subproblems are then divided by the same algorithm into more subproblems. And this procedure goes on until the subproblems become very easy to solve. And when we are at this point, the subproblems are then combined to solve the original problem. This will probably make a lot more sense when we work through the example of merge sort. Another point of merge sort is that it has O of n times log n running time which is the optimal running time for comparison-based algorithms. So suppose we want to sort an array using merge sort. The general principle is to split this array in half, afterwards call merge sort on each half to sort those halves recursively. And as a third step, we want to merge both sorted halves into one sorted array. So here you can find this divide and conquer principle Merge sort just divides the problem of sorting a whole array into sorting two arrays of half the size. And this continues until we have just arrays of size 1 to sort. And this problem will be very easy because arrays of size 1 are always sorted. To explain this even further, I want to show you an example. And this should clarify all the details of merge sort. So let us sort this example array of seven numbers. First of all, we start with the dividing step of merge sort. Therefore, this array is split into two parts. Um, first, we look at the middle point. In this case, we have seven numbers, so one side will be slightly bigger than the other, but this is no problem. So we just split it and save the two sub arrays into two new arrays. And then this dividing goes on recursively. We first look at the left part and divide it even further. Then we look at the right subarray and divide this one even further. And this dividing step will go on until all subarrays have just one entry left. Because when we have one entry left, the array will be already sorted and we can start with the combining. But now we need one more dividing step first. The two and the six will be divided, the five and the one will be divided. The 7 and the 4 will be divided, and the 3 is left untouched for now. And as we now divided the array into sub-arrays that all contain only one element, we can now start with the merging step. And now we're ready to merge these smaller arrays into slightly bigger arrays that are already sorted. So therefore we start with the 2 and the 6, and now we want to bring 2 and 6 into the right order. So therefore we compare two and six and see that two is less than six and first save two in the new array and afterwards save the six into this new array. The same procedure will be applied to five and one. We compare five and one, see that one is less than five and save one into the new array and afterwards the five. Again, the same applies to the seven and the four. See that four is less than seven, save the four and then afterwards the 7. The 3 is left untouched for now, and now we can build arrays of size 4 that are already sorted. So now we want to bring 2, 6 and 1, 5 into the right order. Therefore we just need to compare the leftmost elements of both arrays. So we compare 1 and 2. We see that 1 is less than 2, so we save 1 into the new array. Afterwards we can compare the 2 and the 5, as the 5 is now the leftmost element in this right array. And we see that 2 is less than 5, so we save 2 into this new array. And now we just need to compare 6 and 5, see that we need to store 5 in this new array. And now there's nothing to compare the 6 to, so the 6 is just transferred to the new array. Next, we want to build a bigger array out of 4, 7, and 3 by applying the same procedure. We we compare the 3 and the 4, because they are the leftmost elements of the two arrays. See that 3 is less than 4, and just save the 3 in the new element. 
and cross it out. So now there's nothing to compare the 4 and the 7 to and they are already in the right order so we can just transfer them to the new array. Now we have one last merging step that will finish our merge sort algorithm. In this case we just start by comparing 1 and 3 because 1 and 3 are the leftmost elements, see that 1 is less than 3 and we store 1 in the new array. Then we compare 2 and 3, store 2 in the new array, then we compare 5 and 3, store 3 in the new array, then we compare 5 and 4, we can store 4 in the new array, then we need to compare 5 and 7, we store 7 in the new array, then we compare 6 and 7, we end store and store 6 in the new array, and this just leaves us with the 7, and the 7 is just transferred to the new array. And again, this just shows the divide and conquer principle. We divided the array until we had a very simple problem of arrays that just had size 1 and were already sorted. And in the merging step, we just combined very small, easy to solve arrays to uh, bigger arrays until we got our initial array in an sorted order. Okay, I hope this example helped you to understand this algorithm. And uh, let's start with the implementation. First of all, let me define an example array that will give us something to test our implementation on. Now for the implementation, let me define a function called merge sort. In Python, you define a function with the def keyword, then writing the function name and writing the arguments in parentheses. In this case, we only have one argument, an array. Don't forget to end this line with a colon to show that you're now starting to define the function. First of all, this function only does something if the length of the array to sort is greater than one. If the array is not greater than one, the array is already sorted and we have nothing to do. Let's start by defining the recursion part of this algorithm. Therefore, we need to define two subarrays, one that goes from the beginning of the original array to the middle point, and one, I call it right array, that goes from the middle point to the end of the array. In Python, you have this special notation to get slices of arrays. So this notation just returns a slice of the origin array beginning at index 0 and ending at the index length of array divided by 2. The right array, on the other hand, starts at length of array divided by 2, so in the middle, and goes to the end. If you leave a blank left of this colon, this is, has the same meaning as if you would insert a 0. And if you leave a blank after the colon, this has the same meaning as if you would insert length of array. And the double slash just means that you, that you want to do integer division. So normally you would guess, get a decimal out of this compu computation, but you just round this decimal off to the next integer. Now we are ready to call merge sort recursively on both of these arrays. Like this. This just says that we want to do the whole merge sort algorithm on the left array and we want to do the whole merge sort algorithm on the right array. And after these two lines, both the left array and the right array are in sorted order. And when you remember the example, after two arrays are in sorted order, we want to merge them and make a bigger array of them that is sorted. So now we're ready to implement the merge step. And in the merge step, remember that we want to compare the leftmost element of one array to the leftmost element of the other array. I want to use index i to keep track of the leftmost element in left array, and index j to keep track of the leftmost element in right array. And now I use a while loop, and inside this while loop, I want to do the comparison. The comparison just compares the left array at index i with the right array at index j. And actually, let's use a third variable that keeps track of the index in the merged array. So let me comment this. 
Merged Array Index. Left Array Index. And Right Array Index. And now when we see that the left array is smaller than the right array at our current indexes, we can save the value of our left array inside our merged array. Then we just have to increase i and we have to increase k. In the other case, the right array is smaller than the left array at the current indexes or they are equal. So in this case, we just do the same, the same thing, but save the right array at index j in the merged array at index k. And in this case, we have to increment j and k. So just to make this a bit um, shorter, because in both cases we have to increment k, I just can delete this row and pull this row in front. So we increase k in every while loop. But now imagine that we already looked at every element in the right array and we transferred every element from the right array to the merged array. There's nothing to compare the leftover elements of the left array with. And now we just have to consider the case that we want to transfer every element from the left array to the merged array without considering the right array. And in this case, i is still smaller than length of left array because there are still elements missing from the left array to transfer to the merged array. And now we just want to transfer them by assigning the left array at index i to the merged array at index k. And afterwards, we need to increase both indexes. And analogical, we need to implement the case that every element from the left array is already insorted, but there are some missing elements of the right array. So we just do a very similar while loop, but in this case, we check if we are not at the end of the right array, and then we just assign every element of the right array to our merged array. So these are all cases we need to consider to um, implement the merge step. And since we implemented the recursion and the merge step, we are basically finished. And now we can go down to our test array and call our merge start function on this array. So just by typing merge start and array test in parentheses. And afterwards we can call the print function on our array test to see if we were successful with our implementation. So let me just run our code. And actually this is the result I see on my console. And this looks like a perfectly ordered array. So this is everything we wanted and we were successful. I hope you learned something in this video. Feel free to ask questions in the comments and I hope to see you in the next one.